two, we're going to talk about some of the more advanced drawing tools. You call them advanced, but there's more advanced shapes. They're not any more advanced to use. Except there are a couple of more keyboard shortcuts we can utilize. So I'm going to talk about the rounded rectangle first. If you click and drag, it creates essentially a rectangle. But all of the corners, instead of being pointed, are now rounded. So if I click and drag and create the shape, there it is. If you wanted to specify the amount of rounding and an exact size of the shape, just like I talked about in part one, you can click anywhere on the drawing or the artboard. You can specify there's your width and height, just like it was for a rectangle. And then you can choose your corner radius. And the corner radius is essentially the distance from the corner to the curved part of the, the rounding. So if I, obviously if I increase this, <clears throat> I'm gonna get a lot more rounding on the corners compared to this first one where it was only 12 pixels, this is now 24. Other ways we can do this, because sometimes we might not know an exact value, I might actually just want to visually create rounded or non-rounded rectangles. So while you're drawing in a rounded rectangle, you can actually utilize the up and down arrows on your keyboard. Now I'm still drawing, so I'm keeping my mouse held down at this point. And if I hit the up arrow on my keyboard or hold it down, it's going to make the corners more rounded. You can see it's increasing the corner radius. Whereas if I hold the down arrow, it's going to lessen the corner radius. So I can actually adjust as I go here and visually get to what I want to use and then let go and the shape gets created. So it's quite handy for that. Other ones that you can use the same logic with would be the polygon tool and the star tool. So remember, alt draws from the center as well as shift uh, draw, draws perfect shapes. Now, while I'm drawing in a polygon, I simply click and drag, let go, and the shape gets created. If I wanted to specify an exact number of sides, because although this is called the polygon tool, we could create an octagon if we wanted to. To achieve this, you can simply click with your mouse and adjust the number of sides. Okay, so if I wanted an octagon, you can go with eight, and let's say I want the radius, so center to the outside edge to be 100, and there's the shape. Now. If you wanted to adjust this on the fly, that can also be done. So if I'm clicking and dragging with my polygon tool, right now I'm creating an octagon because it remembers the last shape I created. But if I use the down arrow on my keyboard, that'll reduce the number of sides that I'm drawing. So as I hit the up arrow, it increases the number of sides. And as I hit the down arrow, it decreases the number of sides. So we could actually use this tool to create a triangle if we wanted to. We could create a square, we could create a pentagon, whatever shape we would want here. That's simply by using the up and the down arrows to adjust it on the fly as you are drawing. This same logic can be used with the star tool, except with the star tool we actually have another modifier. So if I draw in a star, here it is, just like we were doing before. If I use the up arrow, that's going to increase the number of points on the star. Down arrow is going to decrease the number of points on a star. Of course, if I just click, I can choose the number of points that I want. You'll notice here we have a radius one and a radius two with the star tool. Radius one is the distance from the center to the outside point, and radius two is the distance from the center to the inside point. And why that's important and why it's useful is we can adjust, uh, I guess, the type of star we're creating. So as I'm drawing, I also have a modifier for this using my keyboard. If I wanted to adjust the outside radius, so let's say I like the inside radius there, but I want to pull the outside radius farther away. Well, if I hold down the control key, that locks my inside radius, and I can simply drag the star to make, in essence, a pointier star. Of course, I can use the up and the down arrow to increase or decrease the number of points. And if I wanted to modify the two radiuses again, I can simply hold control and bring it in or pull it out. So there's a couple modifiers there that we hadn't been familiar with yet. The up and the down arrow to increase sides or points or roundness, as well as the control key to dynamically change or on the fly change the internal radius of a star compared to the outer radius of a star.